Hello and welcome back to Thoughts, Feelings, Emotions, the podcast where we find the latest pop culture topics and give our thoughts, feelings, emotions on them. I'm your host, Dan Weller, and I'm joined with you with our excellent co-host, Danny Frankham. Fuck right off. This is my job. Give it back. No, 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 no. My job now. You ain't getting it back. It's my thing. How How did I get demoted from my own podcast? I'm good. I'm good. (sighs) Oh, well. Damn it. (laughs) Uh, No, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I have had a shit shoulder for the last week, so... <laughs> okay, that's, uh, that's a bit sad. Let's start the podcast off with what the F we've been up to. This is the section where we go through what we have watched or played in the past week and give you our thoughts and emotions on them. You forgot feelings, but yep, you're doing great. <laughs> 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 uh, and we will let uh, you know if you would recommend it. So what have you been up to? Uh, I've been up to... Uh, I've currently been trying to play destiny 2's new expansion uh beyond light and it's been going poorly very very poorly yeah i tried to hop on on the first day and it took me about an hour to get in i did manage to get in though so i was happy i didn't have enough time because i got placed eighteen thousand places in the queue it had to download for about four hours before it would update because it was a 53 gig update when uh yesterday on Thursday and it kept crashing multiple times every time I put, tried to play I got to points and I died over and over again because freezing sucks I'm not a fan of freezing so we're freezing like the freezing part of the stasis just the random enemy uh just the random boss encounters where you they freeze you and shit cuz there's no way to combat it that's the main problem I have with it there's there's currently no way to combat just being frozen, except just holding down circle and trying to break free, but then you take damage. Right, yeah, because I haven't paid for the DLC, so I don't know all that really yet. I haven't come yeah. out of that problem. There's not... They need to add... Like, I was expecting them to make the supers have, like, combat for the new ex- uh, subclass. Cause, but currently, I haven't fully tested it because it kept crashing on me, but they don't currently have any way to combat the new subclass in like crucible if you've if you've seen what crucible's like dad you sent me a video and then people are just using their super abilities and they're actually being able to affect like through double walls and like almost halfway across the map and just being completely overpowered which is just completely broken the game and sort of removed the fun out of it i guess it it destroys people's supers so if they fully charge up you can just freeze them and you lose your super it's so annoying and they just need to have a combat system so that the supers have like a build where if you're playing against people who have uh, the s- freezing ability, you can build your subclass so that it has a counter for it. That's all they need to do. I, I agree. I mean, they probably will patch it eventually in sort of a new game update or something. Um, I was quite lucky though. I never had any freezing issues. It just took me, like, I was 12,000 in the queue. And then I went down to like 6,000, then went up to 8,000 again, then went up to 4,000, then went back up to 7,000. And it just kind of get going like that for about half an hour. And eventually I got in the game, and I was like, oh, this is all cool. Uh, the first thing I did was go straight to the Cosmodrome. I haven't been to the Cosmodrome yet, I've only been on Europa. It's beautiful. I, I'm looking, because I'm doing the story, and I'm enjoying the story. I'll give them credit, the story is good. But they need to fix the subclass. It's broken as fuck, and it annoys the crap out of me. And they need to lower the levels of some of the enemies because it's just... Unless you have friends with you, trying to do it solo is extremely difficult. I think they did that so it lasts longer. Yeah, but they keep... It's so annoying because where I like where I think it's going to save me when I when it goes into a restricted area, it doesn't sa- it like send you further back than you expect it to. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, because I, I got so far into a fucking mission and then I died because I got swarmed and frozen and I just got shot the shit out of. And then I got sent back right back to the beginning of where I f- didn't think, because I thought there was a save point where I, where it clearly is like a point where you go through something and then the next point is you have a save point. But it didn't have a save point. You just got sent right back to where you... Basically, the game was telling you to F off and do it again because you're not good yeah. enough. Yeah. Also, they took away all the superpowers of my good weapons and make me have to use shit weapons because <laughs> uh, they're all low level. And I'm just like, God damn it. And now none of my guns work properly. Certain guns won't upgrade anymore, but certain guns still will. So has that affected your guns then, has it? Not ever yet, but in order to... I don't have any enhancement cores, so I can't upgrade any of my guns to a higher light level, so I have to keep swapping my weapons out for the new ones, and I don't like some of the new ones I've been getting. 
I think I've still got like over 50 enhancement cores or something. I, I don't get as lucky as you fucks. Like, you and Mike get so lucky with all the shit that you get out of weapons and things, and you grind the crap out of them just by doing it casually, and I have to actually try to get them. And then when I try, I don't get anything. It's... Well, maybe it's just, you know, we play smarter than you do, and we're just better at the game. No, because I taught you how to play the game, so don't give me that crap. Maybe the student has become the master. No, it just hates me. <laughs> as much as I love it, it hates me. The more money you put in, the more it hates you. Speaking of things that I hate, uh, Google Stadia. But I kind of love it now, mainly because Google is sending me a free one. Wait, what? I'm, uh, yeah, I got an email from Google uh, two days ago uh, when because I'm a YouTube Prime, uh, YouTube Premium member, and I have been since the launch of it in America because I used a VPN and logged in on my Google account and got access to it on an American server. So I got all of I got half the benefits because it didn't work properly in the UK because it only gave me ad free. It didn't do any of the other features. Um, <laughs> what was the point of having it then? Ad free. That's all I wanted it for. That's the only reason I have you it. Can so get I don't... YouTube's have ad free. Yeah, I yeah, it's premium. I don't need. I don't watch it on a, a computer. I watch it on a TV or my phone. Oh, right, and, okay. Like I don't use uh, an internet browser. If I did, I wouldn't bother. But it's like also it helps creators because it gives them a better percentage because it actually works for them instead. Because if you have a uh, ad blocker, it fucks over creators because you then don't get ads on their videos and then. They don't earn money, and some don't earn, deserve it. But if you have YouTube Premium, it, it's actually a pool, and all that money goes and gets distributed based on the views. So if you have like a view person who gets a load of views, then anyway, enough of that. Uh, basically, I am a YouTube Prime uh, Premium member since launch, and you, Google has come out and given me an email saying, "Hey, because you've been so loyal to us and you've given us a lot of money, we're going to send you an, a Google Stadia controller and a Chromecast Ultra." So that you can play Google St- and a month's free premium uh, or pro version of YouTube Stadia or Google Stadia uh, for free. That's all right then. Yeah, but so, then you already have one. No, I had okay. I had Stadia for three months, uh, but I'd never bought the controller. I never bought the Founders Edition or anything like that. Right. I okay. never. I didn't have the controller or anything because my biggest problem was I didn't want to pay for the controller and the Chromecast, and I d- I didn't want to pay eighty nine quid for the controller or the chromecast because i was like i can plug in a playstation 4 controller i mean that's fair enough why would you pay more money however when i did try and plug in the playstation 4 controller and try and play games it didn't work very well because all the buttons aren't laid out to how the google stadia controller is laid out so if you try and do you can't map on destiny 2 with a playstation 4 controller oh yeah you don't you have your buttons like a weird order or something no, it, no, 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 no. It is because when you do touchpad on an Android device, it makes a mouse. Right. Because Android is set up to a mouse. So if you try and touchpad on Google Stadia, it brings up a mouse. And there's no way of getting the map up. But the benefit to Google Stadia is it's so fast, you can close the game, open the game again, and then you have the map up at the start of the screen, and you just do that way. That was such a long-winded way of doing it. Yeah. So this is why I'm quite happy that I'm getting the new control, the controller and everything for free because I'm just like, oh, this is cool. And then I might actually pay for Google Stadia because it does, it is getting better, but it's still crap. There's still not many games and you still have to pay full price for them. Yeah, I mean, I haven't got it and I don't think I'm ever going to buy Google Stadia. Can't see the point. I've got a gaming PC, which is basically the point of people having Google Stadia. So they have to bail up, buy for a gaming PC. Anyway, talk about games. Um, Cold War just released um, and I've been playing it. And uh, well, at least today, actually, the day we we're filming the podcast, it released. Uh, when did it release? Yesterday, no, it's today. Oh, today, yeah, yes, yeah, which is Friday the Friday 13th. I thought it released on the 10th. No, I think that's just the Xbox. Cause I thought it re- no, because I thought it released when the PlayStation f- uh, 5 released in America. PS5 released yesterday, yeah, I know, that's what I mean. No, that's no, what? it revealed when well, I mean, we came out midnight like, in America, that's like this night, tonight, this night, huh? I have not been following this game anyway. Um, as far as I'm aware, I haven't had any issues with the game, which is great. Um, and, you know, I'll have to talk about a little bit of zombies. And they've changed the zombies, so it's sort of now a Spec Ops hybrid. Right. Okay. So the mini-map now shows, like, ammo locations, wall buys, perks, craftable benches, and in the craftable benches you can, like, buy, um, like, grenades or uh, specialist weapons, hmm. anything like that. 
uh, and all of the kind of um, pack punch systems now have menu systems, so you can upgrade your guns three times, or you can up- upgrade the ammo types as well. So there's multiple ways of kind of changing it, and they've basically kind of completely overhauled the game mode. Does it make it better? I like it a lot more better, but I imagine a lot of people will hate it. But those are the people who just hate it because this changed, and those people who just like the original one and they want to keep it perfect the way it is, even though the first one had flaws in it. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Good, good value for money for you. For me, it's not worth it, but you know, for anyone out there who is on the fence and is on, on Dan's opinion of COD, then go buy it. There you go. And if you're on my opinion, wait a bit and wait till it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah, do that. Because it's it's not it's yeah. I mean, I think it's like sixty five pounds on console. I'd imagine. I mean, I've got a game that's sixty nine quid right on my desk, but I can't play it till next week. Being Godfall. Yeah, because it's uh, PlayStation doesn't release in the UK until the nineteenth. So woo. Sad times for you. You gotta sit on your desk. For I week. just get to look at a box. And I get to look at my charging station for my controller and my game that I can't play because it's not cross-compatible with PlayStation 4. But do you see you bought another controller? No, I only get one controller, but I have a charging oh, okay. station, which can houses two. So when I eventually do buy a black controller when they inevitably release it, because white is a horrible color for a controller. Yeah, I agree. It does look... The trouble is that controller isn't white, it's grey. Yeah, it's still going to pick up grease and dirt and look horrible after like a couple months if you're treating it badly i treat mine nice but for people who treat their controllers like shit they're gonna get so fucked and i hate that i hate i would hate to look at someone's controller if it's dirty you have to give the controller a bath every week make sure it's all washed and polished yeah and then you'll break it and then you have to pay 69 quid or whatever it is how much it is 69 quid yeah they're expensive because they've got the haptic triggers i know but it's still 69 quid Trust me, I have a way of getting it. Okay. I'm not going to say it because it's 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 illegal, but you know. <laughs> no, 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 you're a law-abiding citizen. It's fine. Nah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, you're the host, you do it. Well, yeah, moving on. Uh, Mandalorian Episode 3 came out today. Yep, 35 minutes long. Is that shorter than normal? Uh, they've had a weird episode length for a while. Like, the first season, everyone was surprised how long the how short some of the episodes were. They just tend to do it as what they want for the episode, and it's quite a good thing, because then they're not overstuffing some of them with, like, unnecessary shit. Like, this one's quite quick. Yeah, I mean, I quite enjoyed it, It's not my favourite of them at the moment. I sort of interested sort of the Mandalorian side of things, and then they talked about the Jedi. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good episode. Baby Yoda is sad that he can't eat any eggs now. Yeah, poor man. He's hungry. Mm. I think he gets his that... face stacked by a squid. Yeah. I, I was like, that's definitely alien vibes right there after the last episode. Honestly, my two biggest fears are spiders and sea life. So you must have hated this episode. The last I, two I, episodes. I hate squids. And as soon as that thing wrapped his face around uh, Baby Yoda's face, I was like, get it away from me. I don't want to see this. It's horrible. What do you think about the end where he catches it? Yeah, he catches it, yeah. I was like, oh, that thing was coming towards me. Like, don't, I hate it. I knew it was going to happen. I was really expecting it to drop down and Baby Yoda just eat it. I was expect- I was hoping for that. Yeah, I, wasn't it, I wasn't expecting him uh, to actually catch it and then give it to him. I was expecting it to just drop down and then he just goes, opens his mouth and eats it. Yeah. What happened to Baby, y- Baby Yoda using the force? Just use the force to guide it to its mouth. Yeah, I have issues with the... F- uh, my ba- main issue with Baby Yoda is... Why does he heal uh, the Mandalorian's friend, but then when the Mandalorian's dying, he doesn't heal the Mandalorian? <laughs> like, you know, just they, they, in- they introduce force healing to combat the um, Rise of Skywalker controversy where force healing's introduced in that film. Because they released it a week, like a couple days early, uh, so that it coincided with the movie so that they could get force healing out to the public before the movie came out, so that people didn't have such a stark reaction to it in the movie. Right. That's what I think was the reason they did it. Um, but then it's they make it so that he heals the Mandalorian's friend, but when the Mandalorian's dying in the shop, they make it so that the robot is the one to heal him. But I think it, I just say they could show the, his face and make yeah, him so he can trust droids. Yeah, but it, it bugs me. 
because th- it would have been more emotional if he 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 trusted the droid, but Baby Yoda healed him and he revealed his face to the Baby Yoda. Because then it would be like the a thing connect- is the whole point. You can't reveal his face to life forms. They can yeah revert to but, a droid because it's not alive. But it would be more impactful if he broke his rule for the Baby Yoda. That'd be true, but technically he didn't break the rule. Yeah, but I, it's not even a rule now. No, that's They've true. Changed... This new one is like, oh, Bob, I can show your face. It's like, oh, okay. Well, I think that's happened in Clone Wars because I think they had a bunch of... like I've not watched Clone Wars, but I think in the Clone Wars show that they've... Which is written by the same dude as the Mandalorian, or one of them. Uh, Dave Filoni is, I think, the name. And they uh, make it so that they can take off their helmets and stuff because it's apparently a cult, the one that the Mandalorian's in, which yeah. doesn't take off their mask. But anyway, you know. moving on to the the last thing that I finally got around to watching was X Men Dark Phoenix because I was like I'm bored. What should I watch? You I was on Netflix. Watch and I watch it. It's not that bad. It's kind of bad. It's, it's not, not good, but it's not. It's not X Men. It's I think it's on par with X Men Apocalypse as being like the worst of the X Men. No, I was like, X Men Last Stand is worse. Which one's Last Stand? The original Dark Phoenix film. I kind of like that one. No, nah, that film was way worse. The, the this f- film wasn't that bad. The problem is they tried to do another Dark Phoenix in only one film, and you can't do that story in one film. Nah. Also, they changed the ending, because it was originally meant to be a space battle, but because Captain Marvel came out, they changed it so that it was on a train. <laughs> Very sad. But that's what we call the space battle. <laughs> yeah. Wish I had that, but... Ch- but, you know, yeah. just want to mention it. To say it's not that also, bad... It it is bad. It's bad. But it's not I, that I don't bad. like that film. It was one of the worst films I watched last. It's not that bad. Whenever it came out, it's all right. It, it is bad. It, it's not it good, is. but it's all right. Uh, we'll agree to disagree, shall we? Yeah. Anyway, moving on to the next section, we're going to move on to why does this exist? This is the section where we find a topic and then we question why does it exist. So this now, week, I'm looking forward to this one because it's going to be controversial. It's not controversial. <laughs> it's controversial that I might be doing it. Uh, anyway, this week's topic is actually a rumor, so it's not confirmed or denied. Uh, and the rumor is, you know, so Doctor Who has had a police box now for the past fifty years since nineteen sixties, mm-hmm. and they're thinking about getting rid of the police box because of Black Lives Matter. Okay, this is okay. I didn't know. I to begin with, I didn't know what this uh, topic was because I've kind of avoided it to give Dan the element of surprise here. This is not what I was thinking when I read your text on the uh, spreadsheet of what we're doing this week. Um, Explain this, please. (laughs) Well, basically, you know, so John Black Lives Matter is all about police brutality, and they want to get rid of the TARDIS being the police box, and then they've got the chameleon circuit, it's called, which changes the TARDIS exterior appearance to fit in the local surroundings, but the story is back in the 1960s, they got stuck as a police box, and that's why it's always a police box flying around time and space. But they want to get rid of the police box because of Black Lives Matter. Right. They do realize the protests were like an American Black Lives Matter for against police brutality in America, right? Yeah, but they want to, the thing is, you know, there's a big audience talk to in America, so they want to get rid of that. Cause There's really like... not. America yeah, does okay, not give America. a shit about Doctor Who. They Some know do. of Doctor Yeah, but it's not as big as it is in the UK. Like, no, no, a bunch not. of but people don't give a shit a about thing. Doctor Who in America. It's not as big. It really does not matter that much <laughs> in America. Like, you you put, like, any pop culture thing. Uh, Doctor Who probably ranks very low in America. Uh, for, like, a thing people know, but not a thing people actually watch. But, you know, I would argue at this point, the police box is more so to associated with Doctor Who rather than actual police. Even though police is in the title of it. Because police boxes don't exist anymore. Change it to a phone box and then everyone will be happy. It's two dead things. The whole point is that it shouldn't be changed. It is what's iconic about Doctor Who and it shouldn't be changed. Yeah, It makes the show. Why do you have bisexuality written? Right, that's another topic. That's the other part of the rumour where apparently the Doctor's going to announce that they're bisexual. Right. Okay. And the reason why I'm kind of against this is because the whole point of Time Lords is that they're asexual and they don't care about genders. Yeah, that's why they made a woman one. Yeah. So, and like in the I... previous episode, they're like, oh, yeah, because like, when the master was woman and then the doctor was man, like someone asked, oh, did you and the master do anything? And he was like, 
it doesn't matter but we're we're beyond your species do you watch doctor who yeah i do yeah do you watch the newer ones yes i've seen all of the new ones apart from i didn't finish series 10 because it was terrible because i dropped off once david tennant left matt smith was actually right the story wasn't uh, great, but Matt Smith was good at the at the role. Yeah, I've heard, but I was just like, nah, David Tennant's my boy. I don't want to. I didn't watch all of the Doctor Who's with David Tennant, but I enjoyed the David Tennant ones. Yeah, I, was, I'm, I mean, I was a big fan of Doctor Who before, you know, Chris Chimler came along and ruined everything. He can burn. Who? Um, the old man? Nah, he's not even that old. Oh. Yeah, he's I just... thought his companion was all right. Yeah, he's just annoying because he just likes to change everything in the show. And it's like, all right, man, just stop. Uh, anyway, that's what I'm talking about for that section. Just fair enough. Pl- Wasn't as controversial as I thought. No, I told you it was not be controversial. It's just stupid. Mm. And why does it exist? Fair enough. Let's move to the next section, which is headliners. This is the section where we find the latest headlines of the past week and we listen to you and give our opinions on them. So the first one is the LG rollable phone. This is the phone that LG are trying to counteract Samsung's foldable series. Hmm. And it does look interesting. Because instead of having a hinge, it's a phone that wraps around the side and you pull out. Yeah, so there's two rollers either side of the phone. And then you pull it from the left and the right together. And then that will kind of create a kind of small mini tablet from the phone. So you don't have the crease because the phone is constantly under tension. Which is why you have, because the reason you have the crease in smart, like some current foldable phones, is because you have a loose bit of plastic glass, I think it is, in the middle that isn't under t- as much tension uh, because it's got to be flexible so that it can fold. But when you have the pull out and make it so that it extends and wraps around the phone, it's under constant tension, so you don't get that crease. Yeah, which... also it's that sort of a lesser angle. So when you fold it, it's like quite, a twi- quite a tight angle, which creates a yeah. crease. So when you roll it, it's not such a tight angle, which also gets rid of it. It does look intriguing. Whether or not they pull it off is a different thing, but well, I have a f- foldable phone at the moment. I'm trying to get rid of it because I don't need it. Yeah, the, if anyone wants it, just contact... Uh, Go on GFB eBay. Look, at, look, at up, look up Samsung Galaxy Z Flip on ebay and you can buy it by the time you watch, listen to this it'll probably get, be sold but you know if you if you're in the future and you want a phone and i somehow still have it you can contact me on ebay there you go it's also black if anyone wants to know it's not the pink version uh purple but yeah oh yeah you know what i meant anyway so i was sort of thinking about this but you're still gonna have so small you might have that kind of dust problems still uh i'd imagine yeah well the the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 or whatever it is, the one that opens outwards rather than clamshells, um, has a bunch of integrated brushes that will brush out the dust in the hinge if it gets dust in it, which is kind of cool. So I imagine it would be a similar system where it's a brush-like system and it's like a roller thing where as it rolls out, it brushes it out. I don't know how it's going to work, but I'd imagine they'd try and do something similar. Yeah, I mean, things are going to be a bit different. So you might have, like, external brushes on the rollers, but maybe there mm. won't be that. Maybe it'd be less durability issues because it's all sort of... The under-display stuff be all um, self-contained. Yeah. So it might be a bit different. And sort of the other thing is, like, the durability of the phone because it will still have a plastic display, right? Uh, It's plastic glass. It's not actually... It's, actu- it's, it's It's glass, but it's very, very thin glass. Like If it you is... can scratch it with your finger now, I'm going to call it plastic, and you can, so it's plastic. Mm. They call it glass. There's glass under the plastic. Yeah, there is, but it's very, very thin. Which makes it still plastic. <laughs> I don't see the point. I think it's just to do with drop protection. No, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do for. But... I don't fully under. I, I watched a video on it, and I was like, "This is very complicated." And they they got watch designers to make the hinges and everything. So it's it's far too complicated for what it is. But it's very cool, and I love it. Um, it's not like. The whole point for the foldables is that when you fold it, you've closed up the, the soft part of the display, so it's protected by the exterior of the phone, right? Yeah. So if you have that rollable one, you're still going to have that soft display exposed. Yes. Which means it's But I harder. think what it what I think's going to what I think it is, it's a it's a the the 
it's kind of like a layer and then the other bit comes out. So it's going to be a solid display. And then underneath that is going to be the rollable bit that you pull out from underneath. So it kind of then connects onto that, I think is what it's designed to do. So it's just going to be slotting in underneath. So that roll, that foldable bit or plasticky bit is going to be underneath the actual solid display. Yeah. If you get me. Yeah, I got what you mean. But the, um, there was the Huawei one that hasn't come out yet. Or has I think it is. It's the Mate XS, but I don't think you can get a new yeah but, it, yeah, but I don't think it's come out because I think they, they had problems with it. So they kind of sort of shifted it so that it isn't available or anything. Um, but that one has the opposite thing where instead of closing, like closing that display, it folds back on. So it's the other way. So it, it's got two screens on either side rather than closing and only having one screen. Yeah, so the advantage for that is the um, the camera module. So you use the same camera for the front and the back of the phone. Well, Samsung's fixed that because now it's got one in the back. But yeah, but the point is that on the so Samsung one, you still have a, a front-facing camera, right? Yeah. Whereas on those phones, you just have the rear-facing camera and you use that as a front-facing camera. So you get really yeah. high-quality selfies if you into selfies. Well, they've they've kind of fixed that on the newer one because it's both the same camera on either side, but it's still a high quality camera. Yeah, I mean, it's better. The, the, yeah. yeah, it's not perfect, but you know, nothing. Yeah. It will it will get better over time. Do you have anything else they... to say on foldables or foldables? No, that's everything I wanted to say. So let's move on to the next headline, which is Amazon have messed up the Xbox pre-orders, and multiple people are reporting that they will not get their Xbox until it comes back in store. Yeah, Xbox has have a, had a rough launch uh, recently because it came out on the 10th and since then there's been fake videos about Xbox is overheating and blowing smoke which turned out to be people putting vape smoke at the bottom of their consoles and blowing it up through their console to try and get it to look like they were... Uh, people who just hate Xbox and are clearly yeah. Sony fans. And then they've had... Some of their consoles are beginning to reject discs for their Xbox Series Xs. And then both consoles seem to be making weird clicking noises. I haven't heard uh, this. What's that about? So when people power them on, they make a weird clicking noise. And like it sounds like it's just like a clicking, like snapping noise. And then it powers off. Right. And th- That's and then, very weird. Yeah. But I imagine the reason why this is happening is because of how tightly compact the Xbox Series X is. Right, Because yeah. if, if you look at the teardown, every single component is so meticulously slotted into each other that it's being built by machines. And if those machines fuck up by even the slightest thing, everything seems to be out of alignment. Because they've... they've They've had people try and put it together. Like when they did the teardown video, there's this little gimmicky thing where the dude tried to put it back in the box and he couldn't get it in because it was so finicky and it had to be perfectly aligned. And yep. so I reckon what's happened is something's moved in the system and everything's kind of dis- like disproportionately placed or something's not in the right place and that's fucked up everything. I suppose it is quite the trouble with consoles because you have to make them very compact. Well, someone was saying to me that uh, because PCs are so big and they have so much extra space, that the problem with transporting them is you need to fill the inside to make it so that none of the components get damaged. That's not entirely true because the only component that really gets damaged is the graphics card. So a lot of times when you're transporting, you just take the graphics card out and the rest of it will be fine. Hmm. I mean, other people will have like ma- sometimes massive coolers on their CPUs. That can yeah. also cause problems. Hmm. But, but yeah, yeah I just you think right. it's... consoles have to be compact as possible. Yeah. And the Xbox is very, very compact uh, for how it is. And it, I just thought it, it, I, that, that design bugs me because it seems to be too precise. And if anything goes wrong, then it will happen. And I'm just kind of thinking that seems to be what's happening. And I am still waiting for, because um, PlayStation 5 is out in the UK, uh, in America, sadly not in the UK. Fuck you, coronavirus. Um, but it, it's I'm I'm kind I haven't seen any bad things yet, and I'm I'm not expecting it, but I am expecting it at the same time because it's I think inevitably the only bad things I've seen is the load times. 
They're not bad though. Well, no, but they're worse than people thought they were going to be. So that actually. Well, that's because so. Well, that's because Sony's been pumping up their own stuff. Their own stuff runs fast. It's other people's stuff isn't as fast as people expected it to be. Because they were pumping it up to be there were no load times. But there are no sort of load times in first party games. To use um, Destiny 2 as an example, um, it was 56 seconds to load on the PlayStation and 43 seconds to load on the Xbox. Yeah. But uh, I, I think we mentioned this last week. But yeah, it's it's kind of... It's not going to be for every game because it's how a game optimizes the PlayStation and if the game isn't optimized for the PlayStation it's not going to be Sony will automatically make their games so that they are so optimized for the console that they run at no load times yeah I think you know Mars Morales was two seconds right uh seven seconds I think from boot up to thing but loading into the game is two seconds right yeah it's pretty cool um but they're, they're they've like even now sony like the last of us 2 and i think another game no last of us 1 the remaster on playstation 4 had an update recently where it made it so that it was faster on playstation 4 so sony is still figuring out on their own console like their previous one how to make the game load faster so that's that's just the interesting thing so it's not a hardware limitation it's a software limitation from what the developers are doing yeah, maybe it's custom to the architecture. I mean, I think there's it might have more to do it might be more to do with sort of the CPU kind of things rather than actual SSD. Yeah, give it time and it will people will start figuring out how to use it properly. Because the uh PlayStation one has a uh SSD bootloader. Whereas I believe the Xbox one doesn't. Which is why Sony can get if you optimize it to use that bootloader specifically, then you can get it a lot faster speeds. Whereas, because normally it would just be done by the CPU. Yeah, they're both doing two different things for how they load games. So it'll be interesting to see how developers and stuff use it in the future. Anyway, I mentioned Destiny 2. Talking about Destiny 2, they mm-hmm. recently announced they're going to do some cross-play support next year, in 2021. I look forward to this, because it means with my new Google Stadia subscription, I can actually play with people. Yeah, and, and it means I'll be joining you again. Yeah. I still want them to allow the uh, purchasing between accounts because it's stupid that they don't. I feel like it's quite hard to do that because... No, because it's not because you could do it with COD. But with COD's different. The way you'd have to do it is that you do it by a point, you get COD points the same way that are silver or something. Because the reason why you, you can't do it right now is you pay for the DLC in the PS Store or you pay for it on Steam. And you can't transfer a purchase from Steam to PlayStation Store. Whereas yeah. you can transfer a purchase from game to game. Mm. And that's that's the trouble. So you'd have to make an in-game purchase rather than an actual store purchase. Yeah, and that would piss off Apple. So, you know. Yeah, so it's very difficult to do. They could do it, um, but I don't think that will be added, unfortunately. Well, it will, it will piss everyone off. It will piss off the uh, companies because, well, it might not piss off Microsoft because Microsoft has kind of come out on the side of Epic in that Apple versus Epic lawsuit thing because they're like, well, developers should have the... Because the, the only reason they're doing it from Microsoft's perspective is because they banned uh, xCloud on um, iPhones because it's it bypasses Apple's terms of service for uh, in-store purchases. Because Apple wants a cut of all the Xbox games that you buy on it, yeah. So they're tr- they're trying to get a they're trying to get a thirty percent cut on like a f- eighty quid game or sixty quid game, and it's kind of funny to me because it's just like well, you're, it's not your store. So Microsoft has come out and said that, well, you can do it browser based. So we'll just make a browser extension for an iPhone, and then boom, we bypass it anyway. So that's how Epic could have done it if Epic wanted to. But Epic's trying to make a statement, so. I mean, it is a bit mean for Apple to tell, like, oh, yeah, you want more money, but the thing has got nothing to do with you. Yeah, but that's just how Apple rolls, you know. And uh, and uh, Google. Google did the same thing. They kicked Epic off, but then they kind of went and backtracked a bit. They're like, actually, it's a bit mean. <laughs> mm. but, you know, we still want money. Just <laughs> Well, it's how they're a billion... It's how they're a trillion-dollar company, so... Uh, talking about money-grabbing, uh, mm. Disney Plus has just released just reached 73 million subscribers. Yeah. A lot of money coming in now. Well, I think they're the second highest 
or third highest subscribed streaming service. I can't remember how many Amazon Prime has. Either Amazon Prime has uh, Prime Video has equal uh, less or more, but Netflix is still number one. With right, I yeah. think 195. Which makes sense. Everyone uses Netflix. Yeah. Uh, may- maybe not for that longer, because with every other streaming service taking away content from them and their content library not being super great, it's pretty good. But I don't watch half the stuff that comes out on Netflix. No, neither do I. Uh, I think someone, they told me, they recommended something to watch today. Uh, what was it called? Let me get my uh, list up for films to see. The Trial of Chicago 7. Oh, I, I recommended that. Oh, did you recommend that? I just want my list. <laughs> it's one of the things I recommended when we did it. It was a couple weeks ago. Oh, I think I missed that one. It was when we did Borat. Oh, yeah, I missed that. Oh, guess I'll watch it. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I watched uh, Auntie Donna's House of Fun or whatever it was, and that was all right. Kind of a weird comedy series. I'm still The, the only reason I have a Netflix subscription is because of Castlevania. Is that it? Like, yep. (laughs) Everything else is an added bonus, but Castlevania is the reason I keep a subscription. If they ever drop off Castlevania, I drop my Netflix subscription. Much to the chagrin of everyone who uses my Netflix account. To be fair, at the moment, I think I'm using more Amazon Prime and Disney Plus. Yeah, I barely watch Netflix. I I recently watched it, but I am watching more Disney Plus. And with Disney Plus adding the release date for WandaVision, it's even more reason. Yes, I'm looking forward to those series. So the One Division and well, that was a mid- that. it was originally s- uh, speculated it would come out in December, so we'd actually have a Marvel property come out this year because we haven't had a Marvel property come out this year yet. It's been a but, long time since that's happened. Yeah, the reason I think they haven't done that though is because the Mandalorian is still going on. If it was in December, and when the Mandalorian finishes, it's a week before Christmas. Right, okay. I think if it's eight episodes long, by the time The Mandalorian ends, it will be the week before Christmas, I think the 18th. Yeah. And then the week, the next week will be the 25th, which will be Christmas Day. And then they have to, they're not going to release it on Christmas Day because no one will watch it potentially. And, or they'll lose a bunch of like viewership because of Christmas Day. And then the week after that is like January, the first week of January. So everyone's going to be going back to work and stuff. So that's coming out the week after. Well, okay. So yeah, I think that's why they're doing it. It comes out the eleventh for the no. It comes out the nineteenth, the nineteenth of January. That's fair enough. I look forward to it. Yeah. Finally see a, mar- a new Marvel property. And uh, yeah. So and then we just got to hope that movies actually come out next year. Um, talking with things coming out, or not coming out. There's no YouTube rewind this year. Yay! Everyone celebrate! Well, there will be, because people make their own, and they're always better than the other one. Like, the one that PewDiePie did on the one where it was the worst one that they ever did uh, was pretty good. Like, the Meme Review Rewind one, that was that was good. Yeah, that was actually very good. I have to uh, commend Felix on that one. And then the the last one that they did, where it was just, we, we fucked up, we're just going to do a list of all the shit that was actually popular on this platform was still shit because it was just <laughs> no one wanted it was, that no one one it lied for a bunch of stuff because there were a bunch of videos that got more views than the popular things that were actually shown but they couldn't do it because it was not family friendly and shit um and then it was just a bunch of people no one liked or cared about <laughs> like the only positive thing was that pewdiepie actually got recognition because it was the most subscribed channel and it was pewdiepie and it was like yeah or most views pewdiepie not obviously, Best. It's like thanks for that. Yeah, it's is he, but it, I like PewDiePie, but it's like the only reason you watch it is because, or like, can this video get the most likes, and then it's the most liked video of the year, like specifically designed to get the most likes by Mr. Beast and whatnot to get the most likes, and then it's like, yeah, we put it at number one because it got the most <laughs> likes. Hey, woo! It wasn't a good YouTube. They fucked it up every because they just. They keep trying to make it... They should do it by region. If you're going to do it, do it by region. Because they try and cram in so many different cultures. I think just get rid of it. Just doesn't, It's not needed. I, at this point, the last ones have been so bad, it's just going to get hated anyway. True. But the reason they do it 
It's it's not it's not actually a the reason they do it isn't because it's a showcase of the people that are their content creators. It's a marketing tool for other companies to show we've got this massive diverse cast of people. Give us your advertising money. Yeah, that's why they right. do. It. That's why they do it. They don't actually care about the people that they have. Otherwise, they'd get the popular people and not just the family friendly respectable people that will actually agree to do it like you see that every like the last couple years of like all the big ones that are actually popular aren't doing it anymore because one google apparently treats them like crap because they just get them all into one room and then they don't focus on they only focus on like the really popular channels right, trying okay. to get all the so any of the like smaller channels that get in there that have like a million plus subscribers but then you have like the big ones that have like 20 million plus the youtube focuses on them and then just leaves the other people to just sit in a room and talk for like four hours and they have to take like a day off and they could be uploading and editing and stuff they don't pay them like they don't get paid to do it basically youtube just really mean to people then pretty much and just yeah it's not a great thing but they were good and then they fucked them up right anyway talk about controversy um, McDonald's are now releasing meat-free burgers. Mm. Veganism is now taking over the world. See, I don't hate this. What did you think of the Greg Sausage Roll when it came out? Never had it. Apparently it's better than the meat one. I don't eat Greg's. I have had the uh, meatless meatball marinara from Subway. And that I like. Like The reason why I like it is because they went really clever with the one that they made the meatless thing. They had the one that was covered in a sauce. All right. Okay. Go on. Well, because if you cover it in a sauce, you don't notice it. Actually, yeah, you're right. That's true. Just cover everything in like tomato ketchup or barbecue, and then oh, look, that tastes lovely. So that they they were clever with the one that they chose to make meatless, because it's the one that's covered in the sauce. If they went for their like steak version, their steak uh, sub or whatever it was, and they made that meatless, then it would probably be a bit more noticeable. But because they went with the the one that's covered in a sauce, you don't notice it. But it's still, it's good. I like it. I tend to buy it now over the uh, meat one, just because. Why would you? It's the same thing, and it's just healthier. So I'm like, yeah. If Fair McDonald's enough. starts doing, if McDonald's starts doing um, meatless and it's good, then I might buy it, buy it more. Because I'm just like, eh. I've never hated the idea of a meatless thing, but normally they just taste like shit, so I just don't buy them. If they can make it taste the same. Or close enough. I don't think I've ever been vegan for one day. I have if I haven't eaten. You, you went a day without eating? Yeah, I've gone multiple days without eating. I can't do that. I'm so hungry. I eat all the time. Uh, it's just if I'm really, really bored, I don't eat. Oh, I'm the opposite. If I'm bored, I will eat. Nah, because what I tend to do if I'm bored, I just tend to sit there and just live in the boredom. <laughs> live in the boredom. You You live for the boredom. Well, I don't like being bored, but if I am bored, I just tend to sit in the boredom and I forget to do other things because <laughs> I'm so bored. It. I'm bored. Yeah. Oh, well. It's probably depression, but you know, whatever. <laughs> That's all right. Let's move on to something a bit more happy. Go to the next section, which is the weird, wacky, wonderful world. The section where I find the most ridiculous headlines and we discuss them in their gloriousness. And I haven't seen any of them, so I have the freshest of reactions. So the first one is Elvis Presley's hair has been on auction for £6,000. Um, what? <laughs> a lock of Elvis Presley's hair once swept up. Oh, okay, it's not the full hair. That's better. That was like his full, like his full quaff thing or whatever it is. Someone just cut off his whole hair. Yeah, just scalped to the man and then just sold it. Like, what's a 6,000 quid? Isn't that much money? No. So yeah, a lock of Elvis Presley's hair once swept up and collected by his barber... They expected to fetch up to six thousand pounds at auction. Oh, that barber is so lying. They just got a random customer, and, <laughs> like th- unless they've DNA'd it, it's not Elvis Presley's hair. I feel like they have. They just to. got. They won't have. I doubt it highly that they've 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 DNA tested it. Like it's just it's probably just one strand that he's kept, and then the rest is all just. And he's like, here, test this DNA sample. Hang on, and I've got like, a bit more to say about this. The strands are being sold by a lifelong British fan, Tom Unwin, who has snapped up the hair in 2010. And he quotes, I am selling now because I've had so much fun enjoyment showing my Elvis memorabilia to friends over the years. I would like others to experience that same enjoyment. The dude's crazy. 
<laughs> what? My man wants to have everyone to experience Elvis Presley's hair. But it's not his hair, mate. <laughs> I doubt it's his hair. Like 2010. D- Elvis died ages ago, mate. Well, no, it wasn't swept in then. That's, that's just when he bought off the barber. So the barber lied to him. <laughs> what is... This dude's insane. <laughs> what? This dude's crazy. Fuck him. Just, like, know, I hope he's... Have you never wanted to experience Alvis Perez's hair? No. Why not? Because I don't really care. Why not? It's a lovely thing to experience. Because he's dead. Just stare at Alvis his... Perez's hair. Keep it on your wall. Have it framed. Yeah, but it's just, it's not his full hair. So it's just a strand. And anyone who goes and looks at it will go, why do you have this random person's hair? Oh, it's Elvis Presley's. Is it? This bloke gets enjoyment from showing his friends. He's probably jizzed on it. Guaranteed. He's jizzed (laughs) on it. He's fucked the hair. This dude has fucked the hair. He's in certain places you don't know. Hmm. It's probably his ass hair. He's just trying to play a joke <laughs> on people. That would be quite funny, wouldn't it? That's a Borat thing. Ah, the pubers. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the next uh, story. Please tell me it's a better one. Please tell me it's not another insane person. I don't think it's insane, but it's kind of weird. So a bookshop has now released a unisex book fragrance. What is a unisex book fragrance? Well, it's like, you know... It, Isn't it, that just book? It's a bookstore in Oregon has released a unisex fragrance that smells of books... With hints of violet, wood, and bilbilishaw. Bilbilishaw? Yeah, well, bilbilishaw. I don't know what a bilbilishaw is. Bilbilishaw. That's a fun word. I don't know what the hell that means, but I'm meaning right off this thing. Bilbilishaw. Um, so it costs £19 perfume. I'm not paying 19 quid 19 for £19 perfume. perfume at Powell City of Books aims to replicate the smell of old paper that creates the atmosphere ripe with mood and possibility invoking a labyrinth of books secret libraries, ancient scrolls cognac swilled with philosophical things there? you what? good? yeah all right. you, you had a panic attack there <laughs> I was like, how do I say this word? Dan, I want to ask you a question yeah. if you met up with a beautiful lady and she was wearing this perfume and she smelled of a book would you still date her? I would run. I would go, <laughs> bye. And that's it. I wouldn't say anything else. Actually, I wouldn't even... I would just walk up and leave. <laughs> I'm trying to think what I'd do with a new book. Because I have a new book up there somewhere. Because uh, I recently got a book for a webcomic that I like. Do you not uh, love its smell? I haven't smelled it, no. Oh, I can't have a now. Uh, let, give me a second. Keep talking. Oh, okay. So keep talking. Anyway, this yeah. fragrance... Yeah, 19 quid. So, I don't know if any of you lot would pay 19 quid. I wouldn't. Right, ladies and gentlemen. A live book smelling. It smells like a book. <laughs> it was worth every minute. I got a book. There's the book. You can hear the book. It's a lovely book. It's called Among uh, Amongst Us. Oh, it's not Among uh, Us. Oh, that's a shame. No, it's Amongst Us. Ooh, okay. Again. Uh, ah, fuck. Headphones. Um, yeah. It's a book. It's about a lesbian couple. Excellent. It's not R-rated. Don't worry. Okay. That's a shame. It's actually kind of sweet. It's oh, actually a okay. loving story. Yeah, books. it's a loving story. Anyway, move on to the next one, which is a whale's tail sculpture has saved a train from crashing. A what? A whale's tail co- sculpture has saved a train from crashing. Oh, I saw this. And it's like a big old statue of a whale, isn't it? And then yeah. It's just it's, a... I mean, the photo is mad. It's literally just like a tail... I think this tail is just holding a train in the air, and I don't know how that train's got there. Isn't it, like, off the edge of the track? This photo I'm looking at is mad. It's literally just a train suspended in midair above a tail. Hmm. I'll send well, you that... the photo after this has ended. Yeah. And because this tail is, like, massive, and I can't even see the track in Where this Where is this? Is this from the UK or something? Uh, It's Netherlands. Oh. Huh. Good for the Netherlands. A sculpture of a whale's tail has saved a train from crashing through a barrier in the Netherlands. A transport operator in the city of Rotterdam said the subway train jumped the tracks and barged through a set of buffers. It would have crashed 30 feet into the ground below if it had not landed atop a two whale tail sculptures next to the tracks. Well, that's just conveniently 
Lovely. There you go. Maybe the train fell in love with the whale tail, and every time it went past, it just went. I'm gonna take my shot one day. I'm gonna take my one sh- shot one day. I'm gonna take my one shot day. Today's the day. <laughs> <laughs> and it jumped you know into that, its um, lover's arms. Do you know Titanic, where it's like Jack suspending? Um, yeah. Well, the, whole, the, news. the 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 front of the book, Rose. Rose, yeah, suspending Rose above the Titanic. I can just picture that the tail holding the train above everything else. If anyone can do fan art, please send that to us. I don't care how long you have it's been since you watched this into this episode. Just send it to us. We'll be so confused when we actually get it, but please send it to us. Send it to us on <laughs> tfepod at gmail.com. Or my uh, Twitter, at Frankenstein. There you go. Cheeky plugs. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about it for that story. Uh, then my final story, um, keeping it with the whale theme, uh, kayakers have escaped after ending up in the mouth of a whale. Oh. Oh, we didn't talk about the sea creature in the Mandalorian eating baby Yoda. Oh yeah, that happened. Yeah. Sea creature ate Bandit Baby Yoda. Right, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> there we go. We talked that's about all it. I have to that's all I have to say about the whale. Uh so two kayakers have escaped unhurt after finding themselves in the mouth of a humpback whale that surfaced beneath them. Do you know you can't act, like as much as the uh Pinocchio movie t- said you could live in a whale, you can't. They're a soft you can go through it, but it's too small. Oh, to right. actually, Fair like, their, because their throat isn't big enough to act, like, it's big enough, I can't remember what it is, but you can't actually fit a person in there. <laughs> because they're only designed to eat krill. <laughs> so it it filters krill, so it's not actually that big. Apparently, I mean, the two people, Julia McSorley and Liz Cotwell, McSorley said, after that, wasn't he? They were kayaking, and the whale... And we're watching off the coast of Avila Avail- Beach, California, uh, when one of- when one whale surfaced from beneath their boat, and they quote, "I thought, oh no, <laughs> oh no, I'm going to be well shortly blown. after oh, that." No. <laughs> I, there's no British person would just get, "Oh no, <laughs> no way," All right? Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, let's go on to the end of the wrap up. I'm sorry, I keep going into podcast host mode. you gotta, you got to go into it. Yeah, I'll, so I'll wrapping up for the podcast. Thank you for listening. Uh, we appreciate it. Let's uh, all give Dan some love and applause because he did a good job first his first hosting. time. Um, too much pressure. Hopefully I won't mess up so many words next time. <laughs> um, check me out on Well It's About Time or Twitch.tv. I haven't posted still, but it will do one day. Just follow me, ready. By you the know. time you watch or listen to this, it will be out. Dan will have maybe done a stream in the nine years. That I probably it's still won't because my problem. GPU, my CPU is dying on every game I run right now. So I need you to find get a Google game that would Stadia, die on. and Stadia. then you can stream. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll give you my login. There yeah. you go. <laughs> um, anything you want to plug? Uh, my Twitch is Frankenstein. My Twitter is Frankenstein. My YouTube channel is Frankenstein Gaming, and that's about it, really. Excellent. Um, send in your comments to tfepod at gmail.com. Yep. Um, We'd, we want to do a special episode of The Big One where we do answer your comments or questions or do a Q&A sort of stuff. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, send them in. And then we'll do a big old episode when we get enough. Excellent. I think that's it. Right. We'll see you next week. Peace Bye. out. <laughs>